Welcome to Figure Feedback, my name is Jeremy and after a couple of delays, Flash Forge has officially revealed everything about the successor to the Adventure 5M 3D printer that they are calling the AD5X. Now it is capable of four color multicolor printing and they've also done some changes from the previous model that I think could be pretty welcome in this new model. So let's go over everything here and by the way, you can buy it right now. It's got a couple of different prices, depending on how patient you want to be. So it starts at $399. And that is if you choose to have it shipped locally, which will ship in about 60 days from now. But if you want it even faster than that, you can have it shipped from China in 20 days, which will raise the price to $449. So if you just can't wait, you get it shipped from China. But if you can wait, you wanna save a little bit of money, get it shipped locally, in this case to the United States, and it'll be 60 days for $399. So, a very uh, fair price, I think. There were some prices going around about this that had the price really quite high, but $399, I think, at least right now, I'm not angry about it. All right, so let's take a look at some of these specs. Now, first of all, this is capable out of the box of four color TPU printing, so not just PLA. Here's a good look at it. Looks pretty much identical to the Adventurer 5M. Of course, there's some slight changes such as you're gonna have uh, four uh, spool holders on the uh, on the right side of the printer. The multicolor filament system they're calling IFS, which is Intelligent Filament System. So that's another acronym that we need to remember. So as you can see here, it's capable of four color printing with TPU and multi-material printing as well. So that's very, very interesting. So I'm wondering what kind of PLA plus TPU combinations uh, people are gonna come up with for this particular printer. So they're really pushing that. And as you can see, that's where the four uh, filament spool holder is gonna be right there on the side. And then they're just showing some basic prints about it and how to set it up. So it says that you can unbox it and, and assemble it in three steps. You put on the screen, you attach the IFS and the spool holders, and that's pretty much it. Um, hopefully I can get my hands on one of these and I'll see exactly how long it's gonna take to put all of this together. It features some automatic filament switching if you're using a single color and you run out, it'll automatically just start pulling in from the very next spool. It's got power loss recovery, it says 99% resume print success rate. If that happens, you lose your power, you can come back and hopefully uh, everything won't be all messed up. But here's the other thing, they changed the nozzle so this is not using the same nozzle as the Adventure 5M. Instead, they're using something that looks very similar to the quick swap nozzles that you'll see on the Bamboo Lab A1, for example, where you take the entire front cover of the print head off and then the nozzle is secured by these clamps. It looks just like the nozzles on the A1. And, um, it, it, I have the A1 and swapping the nozzle is pretty easy. Um, it's a little tiny bit fiddly. You have to kind of get it in the right you know, position. You kind of have to feel for it, but it's still very uh, convenient to use. And also these nozzles are going to be cheaper than the ones that are available right now. One third cheaper is what Flash Forge is saying. So that is awesome. Now, as far as the specs for the printer goes, it's pretty much the same as the Adventure 5M with a max speed of 600 millimeters per second, max acceleration speed of 20,000 millimeters per second squared. So pretty much the same thing. And it is faster than, let's say like uh, the Bamboo Lab printers. And they're just sort of uh, driving that home right here when they're saying like, if you wanted to print this ball 36% faster, 18 and a half hours versus about 25 and a half hours for 
others. And uh, I feel like they're talking about Bamboo Lab in that case. And the reason why I think that they're talking about Bamboo Lab in this in this case is because they kind of show like a little silhouette of what looks to be like a uh, T1S or maybe even like an X1. You see here a similar priced printer. This definitely looks like the AMS that's sitting on top of a 3D printer. So they're also really trying to drive home the size of this as being quite print farm friendly because the IFS is just mounted on the side of the printer so you don't have to make space for an entirely different unit or something like that. So, you know, they're really pushing it from that aspect as well. So just going over some real uh, basic specs about it, they got it down here to compare it to the Adventurer 5M. There's the 5M Pro and then the and the uh, Adventurer 5X, the AD5X. So like I said, everything is pretty much the same. The nozzle diameter still 0.4 by default. And then we're also going to be able to get 0 0.6, 0 0.8 and 0 0.25 millimeter nozzles just like before. It is not enclosed. So the noise is just kind of eh, it's open air, whatever it's going to be. Um, and then as for the print bed, it's going to have a PEI flexible steel sheet. It's going to have Wi-Fi, it's going to have Ethernet, uh, USB stick interface for transferring your files if you want to do things that way. It does not have a camera, so there will not be any time lapse video. Um, the touchscreen, it looks it looks the same as the Adventurer 5M, so it's still a 4.3 inch touchscreen. And uh, let's see what else we got here. The power loss recovery, that's there. Replaceable print bed, uh, filament um, run out sensor, that's still there. Still automatic everything, auto leveling, just pretty much just start it, tell it to auto level. It does its own calibrations and then you'll be good to go. As far as the size of the printer compared to the Adventurer 5M, it's only a little bit heavier. Look at that, 14 kilograms versus 14.2, so just a little bit heavier. The size of the printer is the same as well. You see the device size 363 by 376 by 413, excluding the display screen and the spool holder, but including it, 363 by 402 by 448 millimeters. So, I mean, if you got a space that the 5M fits in, this is pretty much going to fit in there as well. So no problems there. Compatible filaments that you have, since this is not enclosed, you're gonna be with, you're gonna be with uh, just PLA, different types of PLA, PETG and TPU, just like they show here. And uh, what, what's interesting is that for the Adventure 5M, when you want to use things like TPU or a filament that is more abrasive, they say that you should use the 0 0.6 and 0 0.8 millimeter nozzle. But over here, it does not say that. It doesn't, it doesn't break it down by filament. Um, I don't know if it's because maybe you don't have to do that anymore, or maybe they just didn't put it there. I would still err on the side of caution and use uh, like a 0 0.6 if you're trying to be using like abrasives and stuff like that in TPU. That's just what I would do, just to be on the safe side because they have also left out some specs here for like max printing acceleration. You see like over here, there's nothing there, even though a top it said that it was 20,000 millimeters per second squared just like before so there you go so some FAQs down here especially I think this is important about the survey discount code in case you um, did the three question survey and you're wondering where's your code if you haven't gotten it yet um, it did say it says here that if you haven't received your discount code to contact their online support or email them at customer at flashforge.com and then after they verify you they will send you the, the discount code so get you an extra 10% off on that if you did the uh, survey that's no longer available but it was at that time and then one more thing right before I start to wrap this up I thought this was very interesting too it says true multicolor printing with no color bleeding saying that the core XY structure ensures precise movement positioning and each time the material is switched the nozzle is cleaned allowing for clean edges without color mixing 
So just looking at the product page of this printer, it does look like it's a, a competitively priced machine, considering that if you wanted to get a Core XY printer that's capable of uh, multicolor printing, of course you would have to look for something like the P1S or the P1P, but right now it's pretty much the P1S is what they're pushing. And that's more expensive than this. Or the Bamboo Lab A1 combo with the AMS Lite, which, is more expensive than this. And then you have the Any Co the Any Cubic Cobra 3 with the Ace Pro, which right now on sale is a little bit cheaper than this, but it's a bed slinger, it's not Core XY. And when it's not on sale, it's gonna be pretty much around the same price. So I think they did a pretty decent job from this perspective as far as price goes. Now, unfortunately, it does not look like you're gonna be able to upgrade the Avenger 5M to the AD5X and just attach the IFS to the printer. Uh, apparently, it uses a different extruder. There's probably some other uh, little bits and pieces that they changed as well to make updating it not really feasible. But as I record this, what we don't know is what was underneath that sheet in the teaser that they showed that looked like it could have been a separate, maybe an enclosed IFS, or maybe it was just a filament dryer. Don't know yet. Um, but when I do find out what that is, when we find out what that is, I'll probably put like up a community post or something like that. But yeah, that is the 85X. I'm hoping to get my hands on one of these. And if I do, then you can be assured that I'm going to be uh, cranking out a number of videos about it, going over everything that I possibly can, just like I did with the Adventure 5M. But yeah, let me know what you think about this printer, what you think about the price, and whether or not this is something that uh, you are considering picking up. And if you do choose to pick up this printer, there is going to be a link down in the description for you to do so. But full disclosure, it is an affiliate link, so if you do use it, you won't pay anything extra, but it will go towards helping me out here on the channel. So that's it for now. Thank you all so much for watching and stay tuned for more coverage about this printer. And until next time, take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon.